Well, another boring Sunday in the books with some high scoring games, crazy finishes, upsets galore. Let's well, the NFL and Eric at home here to break it down with me. And Eric, you look at some of these high scoring games, but it's the defenses that really still came through. You look at the 49ers, Texans. What do we learn after this Sunday? Well, a number of closer games than we saw in week one, but uh, scoring's still high. I mean, 10 teams passed the 30 point mark in week one, eight more prior to the Monday night, or a couple of high scoring teams in week two. So, you know, points are at an all time high right now. We're seeing it at a, at a breakneck pace. But as you mentioned, those teams that play defense, and it's not just the Texans and 49ers, but teams like the Cardinals and Eagles that have kind of carried things over from last season, played strong down the stretch last year, now both 2-0, heading into a matchup against each other. Should be fascinating, Kevin Cobb, Eagles, and all that. It's going to be a good one in week three. Yeah, I think when we talk biggest surprise, last week it was the big upset of RG3, upsetting the Saints, another upset this week. Those Arizona Cardinals go into Gillette Stadium and beat the Patriots. You talk about two different teams and Cardinals get the win, but it's not just Arizona, it's that whole division. This division was the joke of the NFL the last two seasons. All four teams won on Sunday. Should we start taking the NFC West seriously? I think so. You know, I mean, I, I, we don't want to draw too many conclusions based on one-eighth of the season, but all four won Sunday, as you said. Rams easily could be 2-0. Niners might be the best team in football. And the Cardinals didn't get a fluky win. It wasn't like they pulled it out with a Hail Mary at the end. They were the better team at New England on Sunday, so that says something right there. Pulled out another close game against Seattle. Otherwise, uh, we might be talking about a couple of 2-0 uh, teams in the NFC West. So this division, top to bottom, appears like it's improved, even if the quarterbacks aren't household names. And it also helps, uh, as you mentioned, the 49ers may be the best all-around team yeah. in the NFL. They showed it again with their win over the Lions on Sunday night. Eric, talking player of the day, a, a few good quarterbacks out there, but the running backs actually stole the show on Sunday, including Reggie Bush. Yeah, I think Bush is my pick on offense. And 197 all-purpose yards, two long touchdowns, 65-yarder. They've got the young quarterback in Ryan Tannehill. And Bush wanted to be the, uh, the workhorse guy, and he's getting that chance. On defense, though, I mean, a performance that you, you got to put up there among the league's best. J.J. Watt for the Texans, unbelievable. Knocking passes down at the line, a sack and a half, falling on a fumble. He's really been one of the best defensive players in the league through two games. I'm going to throw one more name out there, too. Seahawks left tackle, a backup. Frank Omiel, he's a journeyman, been around the league. It looked like Russell Okung was going to be able to play this week. He could not. All this guy did was step in and hold DeMarcus Ware to one tackle for loss. Really a heroic effort up there and a big upset win. Well, I think Bears fans watching this would be surprised to hear the name Frank <laughs> sure Omiel uh, said in such a positive fashion, but he did step in nicely for Seattle in their win over the Cowboys. That's our recap of Sunday, and the week's not over yet. Big game Broncos and Falcons on Monday night. To check out all our analysis of Week 2, head to the website at ProFootballWeekly.com.